FF35 Lightning II, the flying smartphone with a jet problem. Sensor fusion, stealth, and a subscription to headaches. Three flavors, A, B, C. So the menu fits runways, short decks, and big carriers. The pitch is gorgeous. One family to rule the skies. Share parts, share software, share vibes. Pilots call it a revelation. Accountants call it cardio. Unit cost came down over time. Mass production does miracles. The real wallet punch lives in ONS. Stealth skin that hates fingerprints. Mission systems that want spa days and software that updates like your phone, if your phone weighed 30,000 pounds. Still, the payoff is brutal. The jet hoovers data, fuses it, and paints the battle space like a Marvel UI. You don't dogfight, you curate targets. Reality check. When the logistics cloud behaves, it's a dream machine. When it sulks, spare parts play hide and seek and your flight line learns patience. But bring a few information and suddenly the fleet feels psychic. Everyone sees what everyone sees. Call it pricey up front, pricier to keep happy, and absolutely elite when the lights are green. Next visitor, older stealth, Meaner thrust, museum grade maintenance, high altitude apex predator with 2000s drama. F22 Raptor! The apex cat that retired the zoo. Twin F 119s shove air like it owes them money. Super cruise without afterburner. Stealth that eats radar beams for breakfast and a cockpit that turns pilots into smug weather systems. Air dominance wasn't a goal. It was a personality trait. Sticker shock? Legendary. Unit price was nosebleed, and the program average was don't tell Congress without snacks. Operations and support? Deliciously expensive. Low observable skin that hates fingerprints, exotic materials, and maintenance hours that measure in bring coffee. Small fleet equals fewer economies of scale, but performance? Ridiculous. Climb, turn, sensor fusion before it was trendy, and missiles launched from an aircraft you didn't even see. It's the fighter other fighters cosplay as. Reality check, production ended, parts are precious, upgrade cycles are a chess game. You pay for that edge every single flight hour. Still, when a raptor shows up, the air gets quiet and everyone's plans get humble. Eye-watering to buy, spicier to keep flying, yet brutally worth it when absolute air control is the homework. Now imagine the next shadow. Newer stealth, longer legs, big shoulders, loves no fly bubbles, and shows up with confident cheekbones. J20! Stealth with long legs and main character energy. Big nose, big bays, big fuel. This thing was born to point at distant problems and make them sad. Think AESA radar up front, passive sniffers on the sides, and long reach sticks in the belly. It doesn't beg for a knife fight. It curates who even gets to show up. Price tag? Opaque. Estimates bounce like a meme stock. Safe take? Not cheap. Getting cheaper with scale. The wallet drain lives in ONS. Low observable skin that hates fingerprints. Sensors that want calibration cuddles and engines that keep graduating versions like phones with wings. You pay in man hours, coatings, spares, software zen. That said, the concept is tasty. Cruise high, stay quiet, passively track. Loft a long missile at the ship's quarterback. AWACS, tanker, big mouth radar, then ghost out. Weak spots I adore, stealth isn't invisibility. Coatings need love, and long missions mean more maintenance tea after landing. But the ambition? Huge. As the ecosystem matures, data links, training, engine reliability, the jet becomes less prototype vibe, more touring artist. Close your eyes and picture the next act. Canards, European accent, coalition drama, sprinty climbs, loves turning hard and sending invoices with a union logo. Eurofighter Typhoon! Four nations, one very loud group chat. Delta Canard, twin EJ200s, and vibe set to turn and burn. It was born to sprint high, yank hard, and make clouds file complaints. With the Captor E Asa, that funky swashplate mount, it can peek off boresight without pointing the nose, like eyeballs on a gimbal. Add Meteor for the long hand of petty justice, and suddenly, beyond visual range means beyond your comfort zone. Money talk. Unit cost, not gentle. O and S, not a diet. Two engines, complex hydraulics, national configs, and upgrade tranches mean the maintenance spreadsheet gets its own locker. The upside, mature supply chains, mountains of flight hours, and constant refreshes keep it sharp. It's not stealth, so you pay in fuel and countermeasures instead of invisibility magic, but the jet works. Swing roll is the party trick. Air to air at breakfast, 
Mud moving at lunch, maritime mischief by dinner. Reality nibble, fancy radar and missiles can outrun budgets. Coalition quirks slow upgrades, and against top-tier IADs, you bring friends. But in a clean air fight with good tactics, chef's kiss, kinetic poetry. Now, change of flavor, smaller frame, French attitude, omni-roll elegance. Loves carriers, loves sea salt, signs receipts in perfect cursive. Dassault Rafale. France looked at multi-roll and said omni-roll because of course it did. Twin M88s, Delta Canard Swagger, and a catapult-friendly spine, the M hops off carriers like it's late for espresso. The secret sauce is RBE2 AESA up front and Spectra everywhere. Sniff, jam, spoof, survive. It doesn't beg for stealth points. It weaponizes brains and flight control finesse. Money talk. Unit price? Premium, not fantasy. ONS? Two engines aren't free. But French maintenance culture is ruthlessly practical. Smart access panels, modular boxes, fast turnarounds. It loves mixed loads. Meteor for reach, mica for knife fights, scalp for land mayhem. AM39 if ships need humbling. One jet, three jobs, same afternoon. That's not marketing, that's Tuesday. Weak T, not low observable like the F-35. To be sneaky, it leans on spectra, terrain masking, and tactics. Also, small fleet math can sting budgets if you want constant upgrades. But on a good day, Rafale is a flying spreadsheet of correct answers. Clean cockpit, crisp sensors, pilot grinning behind the mask. Verdict? Pricey, polished, obsessively versatile. Think French chef with a toolbox. Now, imagine a lean, single-engine nerd. Road-based tricks, data link obsession, sips fuel, punches way above its weight. Grip and E! He pocket genius with a gym membership. Single F414 engine that sips, not chugs. Raven AESA up front, Skyward GIRST hunting quietly, and that Swedish party trick, road base ops. Land on a stretch of highway, refuel from a truck, reload from a toolbox, and bounce in minutes. It's the IKEA of fighters. Flat pack maintenance, shockingly sturdy. Unit cost, sensible. The punchline is O and S, lean crews, fast turnarounds, and fuel habits that won't bankrupt your weekend. Open architecture brains mean you plug in what you can afford. Meteor, Iris T, Amram, smart standoff toys. Then go make account and smile. Brazil's flavor adds industry offsets and long legs over jungle and blue water. It's not stealth royalty. It wins on data links, EW agility, and not being a diva to keep flying. Reality nibble. One engine means you treat intake FOD like kryptonite. Small fleet math can make upgrades feel boutique, and raw thrust won't rip paint like twin afterburners. But as a National Air Force backbone, chef's kiss. Smart, cheapish, available. Picture what's rolling in. Twin engines, throwback charisma, glass cockpit on a familiar Familiar frame, heavier thirst, louder maintenance, old school muscle trying hard to be new. MiG 35, the late sequel to a cult classic. Twin engines, glass cockpit, tidy wiring, and a radar that finally joined this century. It keeps the MiG 29's gym body, swaps 80s drama for plug and play avionics, AESA options, nose IRST, smarter EW. Helmet cueing that actually listens. It's a happy swing roll. Air policing for breakfast, precision bombs for lunch, tanker selfie at dusk. Unit price looks friendly on slides. The grown-up bill is O and S. Two thirsty engines, smaller logistics space, and upgrade spurts instead of streams. When the supply train is humming, it's a charmer. When spares get shy, you practice patience. The winds I love. Rugged gear, short field manners, forgiving handling, cleaner human machine vibe. The leaks I also love, not stealth. Sensor fit varies by buyer, and industrial tempo can wobble. In a fight, it's a reliable brawler that rewards steady funding more than fairy dust. Give it data links and decent missiles and it punches honestly. Starve it of parts and it turns into cardio. Picture the next contender. Salt-stained, carrier-bred, blue-collar genius. Fewer posters on the wall, way more sorties. Heavier payloads, longer cruises, and supply chains that don't panic. FA-18 EF Super Hornet, the Navy's blue-collar genius, twin F-414s, APG-79 AESA, big pylons, big shoulders, built to get catapulted, fight, tank, haul, and then hook a wire like it's clocking out, again tomorrow. Unit price, mature, sane, fleet-friendly. ONS, carrier life isn't cheap. Salt spray, cats and traps, corrosion patrol, parts doing CrossFit. But reliability is the flex. It starts, flies, lands, daily. Brains matter. The radar is crisp, cockpit tidy, and the network game social. Plug into growlers for electronic mischief. Sling LRASM, AMRAM, AIM-9X, Harm JSAO, whatever the tasker screams. Turnarounds are practical. Maintainers know the rituals. Spares ride a heavy-duty supply chain. 
and the jet forgives imperfect weather and moods. Weak tea, not stealth. Range is goodish, not epic, and every carrier cycle eats calendars and money. But if your KPI is sorties on Tuesday and also Wednesday, this thing prints them. Speed looks cool. Availability wins wars. The most expensive jet is the one that can't launch today. See the next video. Zartank. Let's start big. Like two front wheels, nine meters tall big. The Zartank looked like a Victorian bicycle that hit the gym and declared war. If you've watched this far, don't forget to subscribe, like, activate the notification bell, and tell me which of these aircraft you would buy to take a spin around the neighborhood.